Stuffed bubbles make beautiful gifts, but cutting a bubble and resealing it can have a high failure rate if not done perfectly. It's tedious, fiddly, and a frustrating process, but I recently discovered an easier way to make these gorgeous gifts, and that's with a wide mouth bubble. This is a 30 inch bubble with an eight inch wide opening for easy stuffing. So we can easily get flowers, stuffed animals right into our bubble without having to cut it. Then we can tie up this larger opening and inflate the entire thing with the smaller nozzle. Before we start stuffing anything though, we need to prepare the bubble. This is best done by stretching the plastic in multiple directions as this will soften and enlarge it. I also highly recommend that you hold closed the large opening and pre-inflate the bubble till it's nearly its full size. This will give us more working room to get our gift inside the bubble and will make that stuffing process much easier later on. For the base of this design, I'm using a 10 inch rope basket that can be easily reused by the gift receiver, as well as this baby blanket instead of stuffing the bottom with tissue paper. I'm going to fold the baby blanket in such a way so that all four corners are held in one of my hands, and then I'm going to press the center of the blanket down deep into the base of the basket so that when I open the corners of the blanket, they kind of look like petals of a flower. Now I'm going to continue to arrange these so that they each just barely touch the table at the edge of the basket and also make sure that they're not covering up the handles as we'll need access to those later on. I'll be stuffing this 12 inch toy inside my bubble but we want to make sure the toy doesn't face plant once the bubble is sealed shut so I'm going to use fishing line attached to the top of this toy to keep that from happening. I've threaded a sewing needle with my fishing line. I'm going to gather up a half inch to an inch of fabric at the top of the toy Insert the sewing needle through that fabric and pull about two feet of fishing line all the way through and then tie a double knot in the fishing line over where we just sewed so that it can't come loose from the toy. With a pair of scissors, I'm going to trim away the short end of that fishing line so you can't see it, and then I'm going to take the long end of that fishing line and thread it through my bubble. Now we need to take this fishing line through the large opening and then out the smaller opening, as that will be the top of the bubble. Now because that nozzle is so long, it's hard to get your fingers through it, so instead of cutting it short, I'm actually going to take a zip tie and use it like a large needle. So I'm going to thread it through that small opening, out the bigger opening and then tie my fishing line to the end of it and this will make it much easier to thread through instead of having to struggle with it. Once you've pulled all of the extra fishing line through the bubble, you want to make sure your stuffed animal isn't caught anywhere in that fishing line and it goes straight from the top of the toy and out the small nozzle. Now I'm going to gather up the entire bubble so that the base of the bubble is right near the opening and then it's time to finally start stuffing our toy inside. Now this process would be made a lot easier if I had pre-inflated my bubble ahead of time, like I mentioned earlier, but I forgot to do that, so it took me a little while longer to stuff my penguin inside. If it's pre-stretched, there'll be so much more room for you to be able to put your items in the bubble. It did take a little bit of work, but the penguin did end up fitting inside, and even though it looks a little squished at the moment, it will puff back up once there's more room inside that bubble. Now it's time to seal up the wide opening and you can either tie this in a knot or use a 260 balloon wrapped around it to seal it shut. Whichever method you decide to use, stretch out that nozzle so it's nice and pliable and then we need to tie this knot at the very base of the nozzle where it meets the curvature of the bubble. If we tie this knot too high, when we go to inflate the bubble, it'll have a weird pooch at the top and we want to make sure we have a nice round spherical bubble. So we want to get it right at the base, twist that nozzle really tight, press the center of the 260 against that twist and then pull each end of that 260 top wrap it around a couple times, pull the other end of the 260 tight and wrap it in the opposite direction before tying it in a double knot. Usually an inflated bubble like this should last one to two weeks easily, but if it leaks air, it's most likely going to happen through this larger nozzle, and that's why it's critical to have a super tight knot right here. 
Trim away any remaining 260 tails that you don't need, and now we can finally move on to inflating this bubble. So in the smaller nozzle, I'm gonna use a hand pump so I can keep my bubble upright, but you could absolutely use an electric inflator. Just hold it upside down so that we know that we can keep our toy upright as we inflate this bubble. Now I'm gonna inflate it till it's about halfway full, and the stuffed toy inside the bubble has some wiggle room to move around. I'm gonna pull on the fishing line through the small nozzle to remove any excess fishing line that may be inside the bubble. And I wanna rotate the toy around so that the very top is near the small nozzle as that will be the direction that points directly upright once the bubble is fully inflated. Once I'm happy that it's generally placed where I want it, I'm gonna go back to inflating the bubble until it's its full size. Before I tie off the nozzle, now is the moment to place the toy inside the bubble exactly where you want it. Gently shake the bubble around until the toy is facing straight out the bubble and the seams of the bubble are on the sides of the toys. You also wanna make sure the toy is sitting directly on the bottom of the bubble and just held upright with that fishing line and not actually levitating as that will allow the toy to spin. Once you're happy with its placement, you then wanna stretch out the nozzle and then tie it tightly in a knot right against the curvature of the bubble. This will also capture the fishing line and hold it in place so we don't have to worry about it shimming around once this knot is tied nice and tight. Set your bubble directly onto the base that we prepared earlier, making sure that little nozzle is pointing upright and the seams of the bubble are aligned with the handles of the basket. Next, I'm gonna trim away any excess nozzle that's left on either of the openings. You wanna trim this close to the knot, but not so close that they accidentally come undone. Now we're gonna camouflage these knots as well as hold the bubble to the base using some ribbon. I'm going to unspool about three yards of ribbon and wrap it underneath the basket and then thread it up through the handles of the basket before going over the top of the bubble. As you bring the ribbon up the side of the bubble, we wanna make sure it's covering the seam as this will be how we camouflage it from sight. Now I'm gonna bring this all the way over the top and then do the exact same thing with the left side of the ribbon and right where we tied the wide mouth opening shut, I'm gonna create a large bow there to camouflage that spot. But to help hold everything in place for the moment, I'm gonna add a couple glue dashes. Simply place the adhesive along the seam anywhere the ribbon needs a little extra support, but especially where we tied those knots in the bubble. This will help keep everything nice and flat and keep the ribbon from shimmying away from where we want it. I tied the remainder of the ruffle ribbon in a simple bow right over that wide mouth opening knot and this will be the perfect amount of fluff to not only hide that opening but be a beautiful finishing touch for the bubble. I also took a few extra glue dashes to secure the tails of that bow in place so they could stay exactly where I wanted them on the bubble. Now you could always come in with a large fluffy bow with a different type of ribbon or even top this with a small arrangement of faux flowers. If you'd like to see any of my other stuff bubble projects, you can check those out here. And until the next time, remember, stay creative, everybody!